whether I passed my uh, BA, my father bought me bought a car, and we lived at Saltaver, and I hired a chap called oh, it doesn't matter, I can't remember. I think his name is Noble. Of course, <laughs> he, he and I learned to drive the car. He had a, a dual control. He was probably scared stiff. And, and, and I think rightly so, because I was scared myself. <laughs> anyway, I used to drive the car. I used to, I used to use his car uh, to, to learn. But now I'm ready to get my license. And this time I get in my car at in Saltiva and I drive into town. And you get into Adley Street and uh, those days you didn't have uh, 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 didn't have uh, lights, what's it? Uh, traffic lights. The man stood in the middle of the, of the, of Adley Street on a pedestal with a, a, a spole and on it that had go they okay and he would turn it. Now I get there just about there at that point stop so I stop. Then he turns to go they and I take my foot off the pedal too quickly and I jerk across the whole of Hadley Street. But eventually I got to the depot where the trees now and got through the test and now I'm going back home. Now I'm going back on my own, I'm being tested. I come down, uh, what's that short seat? Uh, I can't remember, one of the short seats. Uh, uh, short market seat. I come down short market seat and the cough stops. I'm out of bed. Uh, what to do? What to do? So I get out of the car and I went to a garage and I got a tin of, of petrol and I brought it back to put into the car. And when I got to the car, I realized I should have taken the funnel as well. How do I get the petrol into the... Unless I went back, which was quite a distance, to get the... So I, I was very ingenious. Yes, very. I took out my hanky and I soaked it in the pot in the, the tin and I squeezed it into the <laughs> till I had enough to get somebody with it. Yeah, that was my first one. And ever since I was always short of petrol. I always wait till the last moment to fill up. Yeah, that's that's the car. Are you a last uh, moment kind of guy? Yeah. Oh, very much so. Have I ever told you about uh, uh, my going to court? I call myself the late Milovitz. I was always late, running around in circles. And it, I used to dream about it. Yeah, I would. I would suddenly, uh, you know, we had chambers uh, near, nearby the court. But what we did to have, we in the court, you had a robing room where you kept your bib and gown and things like that. And I would be hard at work at thinking of something or other and suddenly realise I should be in court. I've got a case on. This is a small case, actually. So I would rush down there and go there and find I've left my keys behind. Mm -hmm. So I would run downstairs to the caretaker's room where he had the keys and duplicates. I would get the duplicates, duplicates, go up to my locker, open the locker, and now in those days you, you had to wear a shirt without a collar, because you put a bib there, so you had a stiff collar, 
You put the stiff collar on, you unit stuck. Of course, my hands, straight away, I'm now jerk, I'm worried. The stud drops on the floor. Then I have to pick it up and put it again. And by the time that's happening, the case is almost over, they're almost finished. And then I rush in there to the court in the hope that it's still there. Oh, you, they wait. Okay, so they called it, but they called it again. Okay. And that's the sort of thing that happened time and time again. I remember when I used to go to the Pella Division in Bloemfontein. Uh, uh, I would uh, come there and uh, uh, talk to them. Uh, you have there, that's a beautiful a beautiful layout of of the benches in oak and everything really nicely done and you stand behind a, a, a lantern with a, a, a lantern and a space underneath with a glass of water there. An enormous thing. And so I'm now talking to them and there's five judges sitting up there. I'm talking to them and I'm now feeling thirsty. So I'm talking and I put my hand out. But I'm a clumsy chap. I knocked the bottle, I knocked the water bottle, uh, the water glass over. And there the water is streaming onto the, onto the take all this lovely oak and on the floor. And they, 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 were, they were passive. Uh, I take my hanky out again <laughs> and I talk and I mop and I talk and I mop. Oh, I tell you, I was really embarrassed. That was, the first, that was one of the times. Another time, I stayed at a hotel nearby and it was quite easy to, I walked to, I used to walk to the, the court. Uh, I went out into this uh, one street, and turned, the, uh, turned down that way, and then the next street, and oh, that's on that street the court was. One occasion, I thought, oh, this is a this is a mall. This is there's an entrance the other side. Why well, must I go that way? Why well, don't I go just straight into that road? So I go. And I find myself in the Hamadurus. I'm in the industrial area. I don't know where the hell it is, and now it's really getting late. So I ask someone where the court is. Oh, he says it's over there. So run to that court. But it's not the court, that's the local court. I want the Supreme Court. Eventually I got there. Can you imagine my my, my feeling to come to the court late in that in the Supreme Court. What? Did it ever affect the outcome of your arguments on the case? No, I don't think so. No, because most of the argument is, is already they've got the, they've got the copy of the argument. You know, uh, you have to have put your argument in paper, not the whole of it, the, the gist of it. Then it usually go through the paper. Yeah, so that's that. It. There was a case in Cape Town uh, in which I, I was arguing. I'd won the case in the lower. i won the case in the lower court and in and in the two courts. And now they apply. That my opponent was applying for leave to appear to appeal to the Supreme Court. He got it, by the way, but he shouldn't have got it. But anyway, he got it. But the the procedure the, the is the applicant stands up and speaks, and then after that, the other party, the defendant, gets up to speak. The attorneys, uh, the counsel. He got up to speak, and he should have sat down, but he stood up when I got up because he had a sore back. 
So I said to the judges, I said, the Lord's, my learned friend is standing because he's got a sore back. I'm standing because I've got a good case, a good leg to stand on. Yeah, so that was a bit of amusement to start with. I, st I still lost it. I, you know what I said? Ah, you can afford it. Give it to him. Why did you go into tax? Well, I'm going to tell you. Tell us now. Yeah. Why did I go into tax? Uh, I was doing, I knew a lot about the state duty because I was in the master's office. I should say in the master's office after those six months when I was about to 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 the, the design, I went to to do to, to a, a section where I where I uh, had to deal with the states, the states had to be, and check the states and how they were doing properly, and there was a state duty involved. In that, in that sort of thing. And I think I was the only one who ever read the State Duty Act. It was a very simple law, they, the way they work. You, you don't know, you just ask your superior. And often a superior came from another department, he knew bugger all. Oh, shouldn't use that word, you know. Anyway, that's how I got into doing a, sta doing a, a State Duty.